Okay, let's see if we can do this. She's here! She's gonna kill me like the others!
do something, man. She'll kill us both. Now, now, Nicholas, be a good boy and push the detective down the stairs. Wait!
the killer in the first game was. He was arrested for murder, and he he already was a serial killer. He was already cracked, and he wanted revenge on the people who convicted him. So he broke out of jail and started, you know, his revenge scheme, including changing his face. Basically, you know, his motivation was pure and simple revenge. And he disguised himself as your partner. So they kept the partner trade. They had the partner traitor thing, but it was not your partner. It was somebody pretending to be your partner. So you weren't sure if you could trust him or not. But then you found out that, yeah, you could have trusted your partner, but this was not really your partner. This was somebody essentially wearing skin. Um, I'm not even going to get into the supernatural stuff because supernatural stuff is moot in a sense because it was just another way of furthering the plot. Um, although I would have loved to see more lore about the way the world of the undead essentially works in this universe. So I'm a little surprised they didn't bring it back. But this one, um, the story was way more complex and convoluted. But not in a good way. Like, okay. If they had just kept Mary is the serial killer and had you guessing if your partner was fully on your side or not, um, that would have been fine because Mary actually had a very interesting motivation. She was a scorned woman. Like basically, she had a criminal past. I'm guessing it was petty crime because, you know, it wasn't like, like it didn't seem like she had like murder in her past or anything whacked out like that. It was. You know, she was probably like a thief or a drug dealer or a prostitute. Something, something minor and stupid when you think about it. Um, but this rich guy saw her, thought she was hot, and decided to marry her. Hey, lucky break for her. But she didn't... This is her one flaw. Is that she didn't tell him about the whole blackmail and all of this stuff that was going on with her that he probably could have stopped. Because, you know, it seemed like the Pistols were a wealthy, powerful family. Just a thought. Um, so, that would have been, like, a smart move. But you know, she didn't. She panicked. She was scared. And that's understandable. So, it wasn't a smart move that she didn't tell him, but it was an understandable move because of Big Lip. Now, when they first, you know, talked about how she had big lip on her tail and she was marrying this rich guy, I figured it was going to go one of three ways. They divorced, big lip iced the rich guy, thus kind of destroying all of Mary's happiness, or some other thing like something else happened or she ran away and, you know, he thinks she's dead, whatever. Instead, apparently the stall has such a temper that, and she was pregnant when this happened, so miscarriage central, he pushed her down the stairs. Well, that would be my cue to leave. This is clearly an abusive husband situation because the minute she's not perfect, in his mind, um, yeah, uh, he basically attempted to kill her. Forget, you know her being pregnant and having the baby he shoved her down the stairs that's a murder attempt and you know she was like so excited to have this baby and she was devastated by the way who the fuck was the old woman they never elaborated on who the old woman was I'm guessing it was her mother but who the fuck was her, the old woman anyway that, that would have been nice to elaborate on by the way but anyway I digress the, so she basically kills her husband somehow. They never get into that either, but I guess you don't really need to. Just, she clearly iced her husband. And they know she he's dead. He disappeared. So they know he's dead. But she buried him in the basement and vanished. She went overseas for a while. And people thought, oh, you know, she probably committed suicide or something, I guess. Yeah, they, they completely lost track of her, even though the statute of limitations on murder is non-existent, as in there is none. So, five years later, she returns, and, you know, her 
Your file is a ghost file, which I guess means a cold case. But, that being said, she starts killing the people working for Big Lip, the people who blackmailed her. It turns out our partner, or former partner, our friend, was in on it and was probably forced to because of some debt they had, because they probably were getting information from Big Lip from the underground. So of course they're going to accrue a debt with him, so he's stuck working for um, Big Lip somehow, even though our character paid the debt off. Why couldn't Murphy pay the debt off? But that I don't understand either. That's another plot hole. Like, well, if we could pay the debt off, how come Murphy couldn't pay the debt off? What the fuck happened? Um. So, technically Big Lip already had a crosshair on his head. Mary. Mary was going to kill him. She was going to kill Murphy last. So, why didn't Murphy wait for Mary to kill Big Lip herself? Because she was going to do it. Instead, he ices Big Lip. And, well, funny thing. Why the fuck would we keep our mouths shut about him killing Big Lip? I mean, Mary's dead. We shot her. But there's no reason for us to not tell the police... Hey, Murphy killed Big Lip. There's no reason. We don't have anything on us anymore. And it's not like Big Lip's alive anymore to corroborate the story. So, basically, Murphy shot himself in the foot. There was no reason for him to kind of be a traitor when he could have just let things happen naturally. Yes, his life was in danger, but his life was going to be in danger no matter what he did until we took care of the woman. And that's the other thing. Why did Nick, why did Phil, why the fuck did Phil listen to Mary after he was freaking out and wanted us to protect him? We had a gun! We literally could have just went, freeze, you're under arrest, bang! We had a weapon! A motherfucking weapon! So, basically, it's a, it's a stupid ball plot. This is a stupidity, this is an idiot ball plot. Our idiot ball makes sense. We got caught on the head so many goddamn times. Although, in the beginning, it didn't make sense because why didn't we tell people, like, hey, Nick Phil's life is in danger. Mary Kelly's back in town. She's probably gunning after you, too. Well, we didn't know that part, but the execution killer is probably after Nick. We need to save him. Please give me the address, you idiot. Instead, they look asked to waste our time playing snooker. And then knocking us out. Like, why? What was the point? Are you that sore of a loser? What the fuck? Is it because we won't work for you anymore? Dude, we are clearly not ratting you out either because we may need information from you sometimes. What a thought. It, it's an idiot ball plot. It is pure and simple an idiot ball plot. <laughs> I mean, for God's sake, even the police force, they're like looking for somebody to arrest and they're aiming at us when we have no motive. Oh, well, they're a former client here. Yeah, so is the little old lady down the street who lost her cat, probably. She gets run over by a car by a suspect vet, too. <laughs> like, it didn't make any sense. It was like, what is going on? Like, this was not as well written a plot. It was still fun to go through, it was still interesting, I still wanted to see what would happen, but when the plot got going, it got into idiot ball territory, and it was insane. Like, they really should have just stuck with a will, that, can we, can we not trust Murphy? We could have kept, like, the whole, he was still in debt, and he could have killed Big Lip, but it could have been, but it should have been all Mary. Mary should have been the killer, and that's it. There shouldn't have been two murderers, essentially. That, that, that didn't help anything. It just confused things.
And was there a point to the choice about should I, should I try to get Murphy arrested or, you know, should I you know, myself get arrested? Because I have a feeling it was going to end the same way, basically, bonk, and just would have been a different dialogue choice, which, yeah, that's, that's, <sighs> it was panic-inducing at the time, but I have a feeling that's what would have happened, and I don't want to have to play through the whole freaking game again to find out. But this one was not as good as the first. I'm hoping the third will be better. I want to see more of the supernatural because they worked very well with that. And it would have been interesting to see a little more about, say, the Elemental Forge and the Soul Catchers and all that stuff. Because all that stuff was kind of an interesting little piece of flavor that we didn't have here. Um, I would also like to see more of the modern times as opposed to the 80s because I think feel like um, doing a more modern times, you know, takes away some of the idiot plots because there's really no excuse comparatively. Um, also, I understand having the partner who's actually a betrayer trope might end up being a thing in this series, which is fine. It does add a little bit of a will they, will they kind of situation, but don't don't take away the main bad guy's thunder with the the partner character. Like, I'm sitting there like, well, is Murphy actually the execution killer? Or is it this married chick? Is he really trying to frame her? Is, you know, she trying to frame him? Is she trying to use us as a patsy? Um, but also, why did she want to blow up the entire freaking hospital? I thought her MO was just kill the people she wanted revenge on. Why did she go to... I'm going to kill Murphy too. I'm going to blow up the hospital. Like, lady, steps, steps in the escalation. You, you literally jumped from zero to 60 in like 10 seconds. Like, I, I would understand maybe killing my character toward the end because, you know, I'm chasing you. I'm trying to stop you from getting your revenge. That would make sense for you to do.